Hey, how's it going, everybody? Tall Tesla guy here. Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic December so far. Fantastic week, day, everything. I know we're right, in, right smack in the middle of the holiday season, but um, it's great to kind of step out for a minute and take an opportunity to, to slow down a little bit and, and just to uh, you know kind of enjoy, enjoy what we have and enjoy kind of where we are in the space. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and it kind of makes it crazy. And it's hard to, to focus on some of the positives sometimes. So I always try to just, just center it a little bit and, and kind of rebalance. So we got our first snowstorm the other day. It was exciting. Um, just kind of brought winter in, I guess, a little bit, which is nice. And then it's a beautiful sunny day today. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about um, some initial sort of winter reviews. Now, I threw a video in the other day talking about... Um, you know, kind of winter driving conditions and how the car handles in the snow and stuff like that. So I'm not really going to talk about that part of it. I'm just going to talk about my experience with the vehicle versus uh, my other vehicle. Now, our garage has the opportunity to store one vehicle. It's a two-car garage, but we have so much junk in there that you can't really get two in there. So uh, we always had one vehicle out in the driveway anyway. Uh, we store our Tesla in the garage just because it's our second vehicle and the other one is in the driveway as it should be, but the um, just kind of comparison between my experience with my ICE vehicle and then the Tesla, even the one in the garage, right? So everything from charging to uh, getting fuel to, um, you know, warming it up in the morning, uh, you know, certainly the drive, you know, the, the features in the vehicle, stuff like that is kind of what I wanted to touch on today. So if it's your first time here, think about subscribing. We throw in videos at least once a week, uh, if not twice a week. Talk about everything from tech to DIY, lifestyle, and certainly Tesla, which we'll be talking about today. And then if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for the support. Couldn't have done it without you. You know, it's been a great ride so far. I can't wait to see where we go from here. So it's been fantastic, and I really appreciate all the all the views and, and you guys tuning in after each, you know, each week and checking out the videos. So what I wanted to talk about, you know, really the technology of the car, right? So you know, it's got everything that you enjoy in any sort of vehicle. I mean, it is a luxury vehicle at itself. So anything you enjoy from, um, you know, I don't know, comfort of the v in the inside. I mean, these aren't leather seats. They're actually vegan leather, um, which was a new term for me. But they're super comfortable. They're plush. Uh, they're comfortable to sit in. You know, I'm 6'5". It's comfortable enough for me to go on the longer drives. I've got plenty of leg room in it. I mean, the amount of space in the vehicle is, is amazing. You know, everything from the front to the, you know, the trunk wells in the back to, you know, the floorboards underneath the seats. Uh, we have a large baby seat, like I've told you guys before, that sits in the back there. I have more than enough space between, you know, the steering wheel and myself to be comfortable even at my height, which is great. It's kind of a testament to the size of the vehicle. Uh, this panoramic glass, glass roof is just amazing. I really appreciate the view that you get from it. It's just kind of a neat thing. It almost feels like we're in a convertible uh, without the wind blowing in your face. We have a daughter who is uh, 18 months this month old, which is crazy, growing up pretty fast. But she loves the roof, loves looking through it at the stars, looking through it at the sun, the clouds, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that part is fantastic. And then the technology in the touchscreen, right, the infotainment system. I mean, I just, I love the display that you get from the navigation and then, you know, it shows you what your car is doing, all that sort of stuff. I appreciate all that stuff as well. But I also like, you know, kind of the entertainment features that you get when you are parked or you're waiting. You know, my wife's inside shopping or something like that. And I can't go in with her because of everything that's going on. You know, I like to have something to do in the car. It's great to do that instead of having to pull out the pull out the phone, stuff like that. I mean, it's just it's just fantastic, and it's something that helps kind of pass the time. And now, you know, I love the navigation for driving as well. You know, we haven't taken her on a long road trip yet. Um, I know that the Tesla navigation has uh, its challenges, just like any of them do, until they come out with, you know, Google Maps on there, or at least use Google for mapping. Uh, it is nice, you know, with Waze integration or something like that. I do like it, and I like that it routes you around superchargers. So one of the key features of the navigation in this car versus, you know, uh, other vehicle. Now, my other gas vehicle did, I guess, could tell you where the gas gas stations were when you were going. It wasn't necessarily to route you to them, and it didn't base it off the mileage that you had left. Once you got down to, like, 20 miles before empty or something like that, it would pop up and say, hey, you need gas. Do you want me to show you how to get there? You know, stuff like that. But I do like the, the fact that, um, you know, the Tesla navigation will route you through 
the superchargers tell you which ones are available, whether or not they're working. It tells you, um, you know, how long you're going to be waiting at each one, all that kind of stuff. That's super nice, and, it, and it, it's built into your navigation so that you don't, you know, show up at one with 5% battery, and you have to wait there an hour to charge back up and then get to the next one with 5%. So it actually kind of incorporates it a little bit to show you, like, you know, you stop at this one for 10 minutes, stop at this one for 25 minutes, stop at this one for a half an hour, you know, stuff like that all along your route until you get to your final destination. So that part, I think, is really nice, and I like the fact that it does that kind of thing for you when you are navigating, which is really good. And then talking about the, you know, kind of, it, it kind of leads me to range anxiety. It's hard not to talk about that when you're talking about the range. We did a little bit of a test yesterday, the other day, uh, in the winter driving. So I plugged it in the night before. So we had, a, we had 286 miles to start. We used about 120 miles of actual mileage driving, and we ended up at about 121.16. So what I'm figuring is that you lose about 10% on average. Now, every that's a regular commute, not when it's really cold outside, stuff like that. But just in general, you lose about 10%. Because basically, your, your range is an estimate. It's an estimate of based off your driving conditions, all that kind of stuff, how you drive. So if you take 10% off our 286, and then you take, it, we lost about another 10% for being cold. Now that's everything from, you know, like I said, using the heat, driving faster on the highway, driving slower in town, stuff like that. So an additional 10%. So I could figure about 20% on a cold day is about what we're going to lose. And we have 286 miles uh, on full charge. Well, like I said, if we drove on a long road trip, we had about 300 miles on full charge. So I could lose about 60 miles right off the bat, just on, you know, if I figured on 60 to 70 miles, uh, that would give me around what my average range loss is going to be. So which gives me about 230 miles. Now, like I said before, with the navigation, the car is going to take you to superchargers with more than, you know, empty battery each time. So you're not spending an extreme amount of time in each one, which is nice. Uh, so, you know, it'll kind of calculate and figure that out for you. And it does, I mean, it stores all this, it keeps track of all this data, how you drive, you know, aggressive, uh, casual, you know, the cruise control set, all that sort of stuff. And it uses that to figure, uses that to figure out your calculation as, as to how much your range estimate is going to be, which is kind of nice too. It's nice to get a, get sort of a feel for that sort of thing when you're, um, you know, just driving around and, and trying to calculate it out. So, you know, I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, throw some ideas out there, at least throw some thoughts, just because, you know, we, we've enjoyed the vehicle ever since we got it. I love driving it. I really enjoy every time we get in the car and go for a trip or go or even just getting, getting uh, you know, errands around town, something like that. It just, uh, you know, a testament to how much space this vehicle has is just the, the 63 cubic feet of, or 68 cubic feet of, uh, of cargo space with the seats folded down is just amazing. We've, gone, we've had a multiple Costco runs, and you know how much stuff you get at Costco when you go there. And everything is fit just perfect. It's been uh, it's been great. I've yet to haul like lumber and stuff like that in it, though I'm not sure I will. Uh, it's just been um, everything that we put in there is, has been fitting great. So, you know, the comfort of the vehicle, the enjoyment of the drive, the cargo space that we needed. It was one of the reasons why we went for the Model Y versus the Model Three. We just wanted to have a little bit more space in there, and then on top of that, the uh, you know the, the price point that we were looking for it was just kind of a mesh all the way around, which was nice. And uh, we just we just really really just love it, love the vehicle, and I would say this is going to be our our vehicle for permanent, and then we'll probably end up getting another one later on. This uh, you know beautiful sunny day that you can kind of see through the windows, just the sun glistening off the. Uh, the trees that still have some ice and snow on them and then uh, everything with uh, just a beautiful beautiful winter day in December I hope you guys are having a fantastic week so far like I said I hope you guys are able to enjoy some of these uh, you know kind of quiet serene days that uh, you know some of the parts of the country are having and I hope you guys are having a great holiday season thank you guys so much for watching as always I appreciate you guys tuning in and and uh, you know kind of watching the videos we got more and more to come, that's for sure. So you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks a lot.